Welcome to Hard Space Shipbreaker. This is a game that many, many, many of you guys suggested to me because it seemed like it would be right up my alley. And you know what? It is and it is not. And I feel like it'd be the same for a lot of you guys. Somebody actually nailed it perfectly. Somebody in chat when I was streaming it recently said, this seems too much like work. And I felt the same way at the time. But then later, like late on a Saturday night or Friday night, whatever night it was, who knows anymore. Uh, I was playing and I'm just like, you know what? This game is chill. Like this is a game that you get in and you just relax and you just slowly make your way through breaking down a ship and salvaging it for parts, getting some money and just move on. Just just move on. Uh, and it just it, it's, it really is a little therapeutic in a way. Uh, and it took me a while to kind of get that. So hopefully as I'm showing you guys or like you know, how the uh, game kind of plays out, uh, you'll see what I mean and also what it means when it's when somebody says this feels a whole lot like work. <laughs> Especially if you work at a junkyard or something. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. So first off, your initial interface here is going to show you. This is basically your 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 work uh, dashboard. Uh, you can start your shift. You can go to your equipment and review that. We'll take a look at some of this stuff first. And then what I'll do is I'm going to show you guys oh, kind of a one, maybe two shifts uh, of tearing apart a ship. Uh, now, the ships that I'm getting are still the entry level. Uh, they're the, uh, the mackerel class ship or the mackerel type ship. And I've gotten pretty good at tearing those up. Initially, I made some pretty critical errors, uh, but so hopefully we don't see too many of those today, or maybe we will, it'll make the episode super exciting. But just, here's what you should expect. A nice, chill, laid back stream, or stream, well, you know, video. Uh, so, equipment, this is where you go through and you have your cutter, your grapple, your thrusters, your scanner, your helmet, your suit, you see all these things in actions. They all have their individual, uh, their own individual trees that you go through and unlock stuff for. Uh, I have I have a some uh, LT in the upper right corner. You can see LT right here, and you can also see right here 263. And you need 19,000 to unlock everything in here. Now, uh, you're going to be collecting more and more uh, LT as you uh, as you go, and I think it'll probably increase the the rate at which you collect as well because the cost of things goes up, and so that kind of just makes sense. Um, and you can see that there is a durability: 100%, 87%, 91%, 97%. This durability has real in-game consequences if you let this thing go. Uh, uh, unchecked for too long, which is why I have repair kits. You buy repair kits you know, and then you spend them, or you can find them on ships and use them. Uh, you can find oxygen containers on ship or canisters on ship. You can find uh, fuel canisters on ship. There's all kinds of stuff that you could collect from the ships and use for your own personal gain um, instead of, you know, versus like taking them and, and contributing to them to your bottom line. Now, if you look in the upper, upper right corner, you can see it says my debt is uh, $997,997,898.75. Uh, now, there's a bit of story there, and I'll let you guys just experience that when you guys come to play. The core of the game loop, though, is what I want to focus on today. Uh, you can see my certification. Certification here basically indicates whether or not I'm able to graduate to the next uh, level. It's not necessarily just how much XP you get. It's uh, work order objectives completed. Uh, have I collected a couple of reactors? Have I uh, gone through a couple of these thruster class one, whatever? Uh, have I collected a whole bunch of, have I earned a, 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 enough credits to graduate to the next level? So there's a number of accomplishments that you have to uh, uh, achieve before you move on to the next level. The next rank uh, will also grant you access to more difficult and more complex ships and they can get pretty complex. And the complexity of it, really what it is, it's, it, it's, it's like a puzzle, right? Let me see, um, a macro, 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 cool. So they're all basically the same. <laughs> and But this screen here, you can see, you could go to R and then I could see this, this is, I'll reach certification ranks, it's unlocked. So yeah, I don't have any ships there. I could go back to like rank one and do like the basic starter ship uh, or these easy ships. But right now I'm on, uh, I'm on medium. So we'll go through those. And each one unlocks kind of a different approach to doing things. Yes, they all have thrusters. Yes, they all have airlocks. Yes, they all have whatever. But in the earlier, like for example, in the no 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 uh, in uh, in the easy mode, uh, let's just say for example the thruster, the thruster you could just the main thruster you could just rip off the back plates and then yank out the actual uh, uh, the unit itself, and then that's it. But with the more difficult one, there's a number of other things you have to accomplish before you can just rip that thing out of the ship. Otherwise, it's gonna explode. And when these things explode, um. Well, you know, they do a lot of, they, do, they, they basically wreck everything. So hopefully that does not happen today. <laughs> or again, maybe it does and this episode suddenly gets super exciting. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that it is pretty, um, pretty chill. Uh, 
So here we go. Uh, gonna get in. We have two different weapons and weapons. We have two different tools uh, that we can utilize, but they have multiple purposes. So we have uh, a grapple. You can basically use this to like yank things. So for example, uh, these uh, these shield platings here. These things come off, so you could just click on it. Oh, click on it. Yoink! And then it goes to the processor. I turn this thing over here, and I just say kaboom. There it goes, and it'll eventually get into it. There you go. And you could go through and you could yank these things off just like that. That one already came off, actually. Probably because the middle one, it was attached to the middle one. And it tells you on the bottom, on the bottom right there, it's the processor. It just tells you where to put it. Also says on the on the main HUD where uh, where that piece needs to go once you grab it. So we'll grab a couple of these, but there's a couple of different ways you could pull these and off, pull these things off. You don't necessarily have to click and grab and yank it off like this, which this now disables, uh, pulls those guys off. I can go through and take this, attach it to this guy, take this, attach it to this guy, and then take this, oh, 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 don't, don't disconnect, and it go to there. And now these guys, oh, that one broke. Hold on, hold on, there's still hope. Ah, there we go. Chain them all together and let them go. Oh, this guy's attached still, no. Oh, he's not. Well, we'll just throw them that way. Just, just pretend that that worked. <laughs> this is going in the wrong hole here. Hey, when that happens, let's go ahead and pull this guy back. Oh, what is it? I'm not hitting it. Oh, because it's, oh, I see. It's tethered to the, uh, oh, okay. So let's release the tethers and let's grab that guy back here. Already making a critical error here. Okay, okay. Brakes, brakes, brakes. Try and hit the brakes. Try and hit the brakes. There is an upgrade to, yeah, so I'd lost that panel. Um, so yeah, I will die if I go in there. Uh, <laughs> there, there, the game is very floaty. And you'll notice I'll be doing a whole lot of floating. There is a way to, uh, like a lot of drifting. Gear, well, gear, but uh, uh, scrap does not have the same issue that your person does. Now, let me actually go ahead and I switch this tool, the cutting tool. This, you could superheat these little joints here, and it's gonna break this thing apart. Do this, breaks that apart. And now, watch, if I grab this thing and I just go, just a little yank, it will eventually come to a halt. It takes it a minute, but it'll eventually come to a halt. Oh my god, is it not? Of course it doesn't. I swear to god. There it goes. Oh, 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 oh. No, it's just kind of glitching a little bit. Coming to a slow, slowly coming to a halt. There it is. Thank you. Um, now that happens to these things, which doesn't make any sense in space. I like to call it a modified space. Um, but your character seems to just drift indefinitely. And I kind of feel like you got to choose one, man. Either, either scrap and everything floats indefinitely or your person also has some kind of stabilizer that slowly slows them down. Uh, but, you know, the game is still in development, so hopefully some of these changes get implemented for a little bit of continuity between, you know, objects and <laughs> and people, because space, real space does not really discriminate. <laughs> you go floating off in one direction with any, anything to stop you, uh, that's it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Okay, and then we're going to go knock this thing off here. Now, this is just all surface stuff. Like, we're not really getting too much. We're, we're processing some of the stuff. We're getting some uh, resources towards this work order here. You can see right here, it says salvage metal. I've accomplished half of that. I need nanocarbon. I need mechanical. I need electrical power cell, salvage uh, class one reactor. I need all kinds of stuff. So they, they equip you with a uh, with a sensor. And the sensor will show you the internal workings of the ship here now. Now, this is going to look a little bit um, uh, different from when you first start out. Initially, you're not going to have quite as much da data as uh, as you get as you as you you know, unlock more more options for the uh, scanner. For example, you know with this tool, uh, you know first I could see what where the rooms are, and then I could see also all the joints. The yellow are the cuttable pieces, and then I can also see the objects. So I could say, okay, cool, there's a coolant tank in there. There's uh, some storage. There's this, uh, this cargo hatch, and all these things have some kind of value. To them, and and you have to figure out which you know basically where you got to send it. It's gonna go in the furnace. It's gonna go in processing, or it's gonna go down to the barge. The barge is at the bottom. We're gonna go like this. Yank this guy off. Yoink, and then turn around, and then just hit that F key. And just launch that guy all the way down. Uh, speaking of F key, actually, there are uh, there is no way to rebind your keys, which I find infuriating because the break is the control button. And I'm just not really down with that. <laughs> I'm not really down with the control button being the brake because you have to use the brake all the time. So I've actually uh, gotten into the habit of just not using brakes at all and just slowly countering with other buttons. So that way I'm not constantly reaching my pinky down and holding the uh, the control key nonstop. There is a, uh, and I say nonstop because it takes a long time to slow your character down when you get a good, uh, good amount of speed going. But there is an upgrade coming that I'm working towards to uh, give me basically more braking power. Desperately needed, oh my god. That way I'm not holding this thing forever. Now moving at these speeds is not that big of a deal, but sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta drift. 
and you gotta go pretty far, pretty fast. And that's where the uh, the brakes end up really failing you. So yeah, no, cannot rebind the keys. God, I hope that's something that changes soon. You know, it's funny. There's a lot of focus on like in the lower left corner. It says stinger, lights, grapple. It's just a light on actually. Um, release tethers. Okay, you've already seen basically all these things in action. Uh, and one of the things that I thought was, you know what? Maybe, maybe uh, because of their affinity to use like a D-pad as one of their main UI elements, maybe this plays better on the controller. Boy, was I wrong to assume that. It really was not easy <laughs> to, to play out with a controller. Not at all. Uh, the, the way that the keys are bound, and again, you cannot rebind the keys, just did not make sense to me. Uh, there's a couple other functions that uh, I'll show you now that I'm not going to use because I just haven't really found a purpose to use it yet. Uh, is the ZX key, which are again a very awkwardly placed. So if it's Z key, it'll hold 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 Z. It'll hold me down so that way I can zap things. So like for example, this. Oh, 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 there we go. So if you're tired of floating around, you could do this and just kind of hold yourself down using one hand. Z and X key, two different hands. What happens if I use the... Well, my one hand is on here, right? Still? Where's my hand? Oh, I guess I, I picked up my hand to... Uh, well, how funny. Oh, it just kind of held me down for a second. Oh, interesting. Even though I, I was not using my hand for that. <laughs> Weird. So anyways, that, yes, you can hold on to things. They are a little awkwardly placed, and that is pretty handy to use if you uh, need to hold yourself steady to do work. Uh, but it's not something that I use very often. So just, just so you don't think I missed Air it, I figured I'd show you guys. So now we are inside the main cabin here. We decompressed. If you don't decompress, the entire ship explodes. Contrary to what you're taught in movies, where it just sucks everybody out of that one tiny little hole. Fine. Uh, and this is where you go to deactivate. Air pressure level decreasing. There you go. And then you just want to verify. We're going to go and hit this. Airlock pressure levels dropping. There we go. Boom. Now those doors are open. Now the entire internals are decompressed. Uh, now we need some oxygen because it is getting critical. Let's go and take one of these guys right off the wall here. Yoink. Oxygen level stabilized. There we go. And let's take a look at the inside to see what we have to work with. They have a hard drive here. We can take this. Sometimes they, they basically have different... Um, some of them are like voice, like little voice advertisers. I got an advertisement. Uh, the game is very cheeky in the way that it kind of treats you as the um, as the employee, uh, and you'll hear it as uh, as certain things happen. You know, whether I run low on fuel or whatever, whether I run low on oxygen, uh, you'll get a little voice that'll come over and it'll say uh, that uh, carbon carbon dioxide or carbon whatever is is uh, is bad for Link's company assets, and it's referring to you, of course. This all plays into the reason why I have a, a $1 billion debt, <laughs> which you'll soon discover. <laughs> but the story itself doesn't seem to be, uh, it doesn't really feel like there's a whole lot of story elements that are constantly being fed to you. It's a very, very slow trickle. I am like five, six hours in, and I'm pretty much in almost the same spot I was when I first started. I don't really know if there's a whole lot of actual story story to be told. Think like portal, for example, where you just have kind of this uh, you know, this ever-present entity that's slowly feeding you little lines and eventually they get crazier and weirder and all of a sudden you, you kind of, you're, you're kind of putting together a bit of a story with what's happening in the background. Um, I'm not really getting that feeling yet. Oh, cool. Let's take this utility key. We're not going to use it. Uh, <laughs> we're just going to go and sever all of these connections here. One at a time. And you gotta be careful because this laser beam is hot. You get too close to something else, like let's say that fuel tank, it will explode. Actually, let's go and click that. Repair kit. I like I like to just float down here. And I've heard some people can take these macros apart in like four minutes. And I am already at six minutes and I have not even taken apart the uh uh well, you know, the main fuselage here. I'm getting there though, I'm getting there though. At the very least, I know I can take this thing a whole take take this thing apart. In most cases, uh, without necessarily having it explode on me, but I say in most cases because you never know. You never know. I'm talking while I'm working. You know, sometimes uh, you get distracted. Don't don't uh, don't text and drive kind of thing. You know. And do that. These little cargo things are very easy to set on fire. So you notice they have their own little health there. Basically, yellow, yellow, and then oh shit, it's on fire. I guess that's what the red stands for. Let me see if I can get close enough. Don't don't burn it. Don't burn it. It does pay a lot of respect to having to, uh, forcing the user to have to really manage their physical location in the game or in the uh, in the ship 
and the tools that they're using with the equipment that's around them. Like you have to have that level of awareness. You're just not going to come in here and just start slicing things up. Weaver talks uh, every once in a while. Initially, I think you get a little bit of kind of introduction with him. Uh, but beyond that, again, it doesn't really progress the story too much. Now, frankly, I don't really care about the story in the games thus far because it's not really giving me a whole lot to really latch on to. Uh, because the game itself, is, in terms of just a nice, chill, therapeutic, uh, you know, let's just, let's just go through and just rip this this, this uh, ship to shreds and see how many... How small, how small a pieces we can break it up into, and you can break it up into some pretty small pieces. <laughs> uh, now, but you only have 12 minutes per session, so we're gonna finish this session here, and let's see. We're gonna see how much we can get through one in one session. You guys want to see? Uh, let's toss a bunch of this stuff, and I'm gonna show you guys how to get the fuel stuff out because that's what I mentioned was something that was super easy to do on the easy ships, and then all of a sudden got pretty freaking hard. Let's see. Well, I say pretty hard, but then you figure out how to do it, and basically it's just routine. Unless, of course, you mess up and you hit the wrong button or do something like that. Let's go and yoink this guy off. And let's go into the barge, kind of awkwardly placed because it's not really directly over the barge, so we're going to try to lift it up. Use my right click here to suck that in, and then before it hits me... Oh, nope. Uh-oh. Oh, haha. Oh, <laughs> um, that was the first time seeing that. I guess I was having it come towards my... Uh, Towards me a little too fast. He's put up his hand and everything. That's crazy. Just kind of get that right over top. I want to make sure that goes in. There we go. I could just could have tethered it, but we have ten tethers, and then I want to go back to refill. You can refill at the station, uh, right over there. There's a little 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 uh, terminal over there. I say a little, but really one of my biggest complaints about the game is that the scale is a bit weird. Like it's hard to tell exactly how big you are if it makes any sense. Uh, I I talked about this on stream a little bit. And I think it has a couple things to play into that. One, it's the FOV is not adjustable, 2020. Uh, and the, whoa, is he attached to that one? Did that work? No, nah, not really. I was going to get right out. Uh, and the other one is, I think that it's, it's a texture thing. Like some of the textures maybe don't have the detail that you'd expect when you get close enough. So you don't really feel like you are, um, uh, like you don't really feel feel you feel like things are just the scales a bit like just wonky so let's do this so this thing has two pieces on it this is going to go in the processor the wall and the uh the reactor is going to go down into the barge and the reactor starts getting a little just a little upset when you start pulling it off and start taking it some places so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start bringing it over here slowly and then i'm going to take this now let me do it. You. Yeah, you're fine. Now that's going to start flying here. Now let me see if I can yank this guy off. Good. And then pull it down. Music's going to get kind of crazy. But wow. Your characters start breathing heavy. Look at that. Thumbs up. Thumbs up means that you've completed one of the objectives on your work order. Remember, we need to complete a certain number of objectives in order to reach the next rank. So you want to complete those as thoroughly as possible. Do I have any more, any more oxygen here? No, there's not. Okay, cool. So let's go over and get some oxygen. Now, this is actually the perfect opportunity to show you guys what I'll talk about in terms of scale. Um, as we go over here, we get some good speed. The ship is a lot bigger than it looks as you get close. It feels like, you know, a little platform, a little, little monitor, right? But then as you get closer, first let's interact with it. Oxygen reserves are critical. Nope. Let's go and get this. Get some oxygen. oxygen are there we go. The so, it feels like this, this screen is about as big as it's going to get. And then you get closer, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> like, your face is right on it. And you feel like, you know, I, I understand. It's like, yeah, if I put my face right on something, it should be big. But look at this. That seems stupid. <laughs> I'm sta I guess I'm standing. Am I standing on this One thing? Left, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. I don't know. There's just some, there's something wonky with it. Maybe I need a bigger hitbox or something, but if you did do that, then it'd be make navigating inside of these ships a little bit more difficult. Maybe just higher res textures or something. Uh, I actually wonder if is that anything to do with me? Let me see. Go to options and take a look at video. Uh, and texture quality is on high. Is there an ultra? Nope. Nope. Just medium on high. That's it. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's it, again. I, I think a good chunk of the um being disoriented with in terms of like the character size has a lot to do with the uh uh with my fov and it's locked so you know so you know there's that 
Still though, you know, after the first day of playing, it was a little frustrating because, you know, of some of these issues that I pointed out. Uh, the music is very repetitive. I end up turning off the music that helped when I put on my own music. And I, I highly recommend that because again, this is a game that you're going to be, uh, let's put it there and get off from underneath, there you go. Uh, but you are going to be spending a lot of time just slowly working your way stuff uh, through stuff. But yeah, the, the game definitely repeats music or feels like it's the same damn song on loop constantly. Okay, we're at the end of our shift here. Thumbs up! So we just barely made the salvage metal quota. Um, so we see there's a work order review here. We can see that we got an additional 152 experience there. And then over here, it brings you a breakdown of everything that you've collected and everything on how much you get for it. You can see that class one reactor was $500,000. Uh, uh, so that was obviously worth grabbing and trying to keep intact. Now the next screen here shows you uh, what your bottom line is. This is basically your P&L. Um, is it going to show you? Oh, oh, we, uh, oh, here it is. So yeah, this is basically your P&L. It tells you how much money you, uh, how much money you net end up making. So the total for the daily fees was 500,000 and that includes, uh, thankfully we have no resurrection fees. That's 150,000, just FYI. Uh, and you have your cutter rental, your grapple rental, like this is a lot of stuff. You have interest on top of the debts. It definitely feels like you're never going to get out of debt, right? It just feels like a student loan breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> but it is designed to, uh, to to basically entice you to continue to play, to work off that debt, right? And not make any mistakes and not do any of that stuff. But we did turn a profit today. Yay. We're going to do one more shift here because we did not take apart the ship as, as far as I would like in, uh, in order to complete this episode. Uh, my cutter is actually taking a little bit of damage here. We're going to go and repair that. Just hit that F key. Boom. Uh, navigating the UI, by the way, using WAS, E, and Tab is great. It feels like an old like AS100 system when you're kind of going through everything. Um, if you don't want an AS100 system, just don't worry. The, the, the WAS works great for this. <laughs> Let's see. Let's go ahead and go um, E. And then, uh, actually, no, I wanted to go down to brakes. Jesus, please. Can I get brakes? Oh, not yet. What do I need for that? Oh, I have to unlock this first. Oh, suit integrity plus one. And then I could get the... What's well, electrical resistance? Hold on a second. Where did I see the brakes? Oh, probably thrusters. Here it is. Here it is. Brakes. Jesus, yes. All right, no more complaints. No more complaints about brakes today, guys. I think we're good. <laughs> now we go back to continue salvage. Now, if, if I'm at the point where I feel like I'm done with the ship, remember it cost me like 500,000 every single time I go out, um, which that number will decrease as you continue to pay off your debt because it was 100,000 of that was, uh, was just straight up interest. Um, as you go through and strip the ship, you could determine, okay, hmm, do I want to go and salvage again or do I want to get another ship? So you can quit anytime. There's no upper limit. You don't have to complete all the work orders and do any of that stuff. You can just do as much as you want and then move on to the next ship, which again contributes to the uh, kind of very relaxed uh, approach to the game. You just take your time with it. You get in, you could spend as many shifts as you want. As many, I guess as many shifts as you can rack up debt for, uh, taking this thing apart and getting as much money as you can from it. But again, at, at some point, you're going to run out of very expensive and, and uh, worthwhile stuff to... Uh, to, to remove from the uh, from the ship. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and rip off these uh, these bottom panels here. Well, they're already coming off, which is great. How many of these? You two? Let's get kind of give them a little bit of a lift here. It's a little bit of a yoink. Let's see if we can loosen them up some. There we go. Same with you. And then what we'll do is we'll chain them all together and have them all go into the into the thing over there. So we'll go you to you. You to you, and then you to ya. There we go. All into the processor. And let's hope that the lines, the tethers stay relatively... Stir oh god, the red is bad. There we go. This one might be a little bit of a problem. Just gonna give him a little boost. Give him a little boost. And we get a little F boost. There we go. F boost. F boost. There we go. Give that a little blast. There we go. Those are all gonna go in. Sweet. Easy way to get rid of all. Now, now we can go through and, what is this thing? I think it's just a soda. Furnace that thing. So now we can rip these things off the walls. Goes into the barge, soft crates. Boom. Now this one as well. Salvage secured. It's really easy to get these guys applied. except for this. This needs to come back a little bit. I'm gonna go into the furnace. Oh, the brakes are so much better. <laughs> oh my god, I don't have to hold, oh, to like mash the control key through the damn PCB. Let me see. 
So we got pretty much the entire bottom open. And one thing I really wanted to show you guys is removal of some of the uh, more important elements back here in the back. Let's first clear out a little bit of space. We're going to use the... I haven't used the cutter cutter yet. That's probably a good thing to show you guys. And then what we'll do is... Stop right here. That's this song. God. 15 times I've heard this song. Just today. There we go. Slice it there. Slice it right about there. That would go all the way through. There we go. Turn this guy like that. And then we're gonna start chopping a couple of pieces. Hmm, actually, let's go, let's go back down here and do this. We want it to just cut the thing we're aiming at. I don't want it to cut anything behind it because then, uh, because we don't know what's behind that wall, do we? Yeah, we do. We go like this. And you notice I did cut a hole right through it. See? <laughs> I'm gonna set a fire. Oh god. Oh Jesus. Let's get closer. Please, just do that part. Okay. I think that's everything. Well, no, if it's blue. Good, blue. Now let's turn it a little bit. This thing usually gets pretty crazy if you try to wiggle it out. Whoa! Okay, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, no, 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 no. Wow, that was close. That could do some serious damage. Like, you could, if you take damage to your scanner, like, you, you'll pull this thing up and it's gonna look like just a staticky mess. You're not gonna see anything. So, yeah, you get to be careful with that kind of stuff. You can't just go flinging gigantic pieces of, uh, Nano carbon all over the place. Although it did add to my work order, right? Nano carbon. Oh, pretty close to being done there. Sweet. So now we have gr a pretty significant access to the back here. This is where we're gonna start ripping off these walls and getting these fuel tanks uh, discharged before we cut through the uh, or release the rear thruster. We need a power cell as well. I know where that's at, roughly. And you know, you are doing the same ship over and over again for at least the first couple hours, but they are there are rel they are relatively f like var variants. There's a couple of variants. Um, oh, I'm not quite broken up this yet. There are a number of variants of it, so you doesn't feel like you're necessarily repeating the same thing over and over again. And at the same time, uh, you need to get good. So you know, <laughs> practice makes perfect. And if you're gonna sit there and move from ship to ship to ship, you're not gonna really learn too much. Oh, come on. Okay, something's something's not cutting here. Something's not cutting it. There it goes. Okay, get that up. Now we're gonna take this thing straight to salvage here. Whoa. We'll just let little tethers take care of that. Yoink! Wee! Now you can also like reel yourself into something if you need to, like this. Attach it and then pull your reel yourself reel yourself in if you need to. Feel shut off. We'll shut that thing off. That's one. Furnace. Get that out of the way. Big giant scar right across the top. My bad. Okay. Oh, I see. I actually I spliced it in half. Pretty good. I got it pretty good, didn't I? That was off. Oh, no, no. That's good. I'll take this guy to the furnace as well. Oops. Running out of room here. Do I have enough room to get through there? Can I get this? Yes, I can. Cool, now these things are discharged. I can go ahead and release this guy. With no problem. It even tells you that you need to find it. That, that's, that's kind of the cool thing about the game is that it will, it doesn't necessarily just kind of leave you hanging just with trial and error. Uh, except for the airlock bit, which some of you guys are gonna make that mistake. So, remember that. But, um, yeah, it will, uh, it will tell you, like, may cause a fire if you activate without doing blank. So it just kind of flat out almost gives you like a, a clue or the answer to what you need to do. So if you get a little too, if you're not reading and if you're not, uh, if you're in a rush or something, like you're probably gonna, you're probably gonna uh, cause some issues. <laughs> okay, line that guy up, line that up, boom. Pull this guy, whoa, no, 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 no. Come on, reel it, reel it, reel it, reel it. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's do this. Just, just tether it real quick. Don't hit anything. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> now we can go into the back here. What do we have? Solid mechanical, electrical, solid power cells. We need some. There's a lot of stuff we gotta get. Eight minutes, thirty seconds. Definitely slow. You can't break through that. I believe that's probably just one of the pieces you cannot take apart at all. But it could be wrong. Um, can however. Oxygen reserves are low. Oh, oxygen reserves. Okay, let's go ahead and yoink this guy out. It's gonna go into the barge. Gotta be careful, obviously. We don't wanna... We don't wanna make it angry. 
This one's gonna be a bit of a different story though. Let's see, maybe we can salvage deposit accepted. Credit transfer. There we go. Let's see if we can wiggle this guy out. Oh, come on. There we go. Come on, get out. I'm trying to twist it out. Rotate your character to twist the stuff inside, but that's not happening here. Let's cut it again. That'll do it. No? There it goes. Whoa. Okay. We need oxygen. Let's go back. Oxygen reserves are critical. Please contact your this be a great test of our oxygen, or our brakes, rather. Lots of uh, Mass Effect vibes you get from the um, from your uh, from the music at times. Otherwise, though, the music can be just skipped. <laughs> just, just play something else. Oxygen level stabilizing. Oxygen, yes, good. Okay, we have eight tethers still. We have plenty of tethers. I just like attach a tether to a random spot there. Awesome. I'm just going to take this and just drop right into the furnace. I think that one's going to go to. Release that tether. Let's grab this boy right here. Oh, that break is so much better. That's beautiful. I believe the break will also probably... Oh, God. Oh, boy. Oh, gosh. Uh, probably also help you when you're pulling things. Because uh, you have more... St basically more stability. Okay. Let's see. Salvage secured. I believe this panel actually just come right off. Let's yoink this thing off. No, you, no. Wait, do I have to like cut it off? No, I don't think so. This whole thing has to come off somehow. I'm not worried about that. Let's get into the. Uh, let's try to get into the walls. The walls. Let's see what do we have back here. Good apartment. Apartment. Okay, there's nothing to really cut right there. We have a place to cut here. We cut that. Oh, here we go. This is open, uh, open corridor here. Oh, nice. Probably this is one that has the. Uh, oh no, it has nothing. Oh, there's power cells down there. Cool. Money. Money is what that means. Yeah. Oh, gotta be careful because the thing does overheat. Bottom right corner there. You can also upgrade that to not overheat quite as much. You probably already guessed that though. There's a coolant station there too, be careful. Or coolant uh, canister. Uh, we're going to break open the uh, emergency escape hatch or something. Ah, there's another one right there. Let's get further away from the uh, from the power cell. Nice. Let's go ahead and get this guy pushed away. Boop. And then we'll just tether him down there. You go get it. Frame drops left and right. And, you know, the frames are... Five minutes. Thank you so much. Does that count as electrical mechanical? I don't think so. Okay, let's get this power cell out. Um, what was I going to say? I forgot. Let's grab this guy. I'm going to be careful. Oh! It's okay. I should have I should have stayed farther back. Long-term job satisfaction. Should've stayed farther back. There we go. We're good. Alright. That's money. That's all that matters. So what's funny, and I said this on stream too, uh, the music that it changes to is so much more enjoyable to me than the music that they typically play. Like at first I was kinda like, oh cool, it's like it sounds like Terran music, right? Starcraft. It sounds like Terran music. Uh, but then like it's the same song over and over again, and it seems like the same song over and over again. It could just be, you know, country music all sounds the same kind of thing. Um Oh, they get them both? Look at that. One, two punch. But now I think it's the same song over again. But the music that it malfunctions to is so much better. <laughs> Let's see, did I loosen anything up here? I did not. So that means there's something somewhere else. Yeah, I can get it from out here. Let's take a look at this. So there's a couple of, oh, there's a couple of joints here. I bet those guys will do it. These are outer structural hole things. So we'll just go and zap that. Zap that. We'll do the same on the other side. This will probably rip that whole front off. I believe it does, actually. If I do all six of these, I think the entire front end will kind of open up and split. Now, that little hit that I took with the power cell uh, probably did some actual damage to my uh, to my scanner. It's electrical electrical components, of course. Um, 
thankfully I didn't lose anything else. Like my grapple and everything still works. I could have done damage to that, but everything seems to still work fine. Alright, let's see. What are we dealing with here? I guess it's just the bars, huh? No, that can't be it. Oh, it looks like it. Processor it is. One over there. Caution. Tether Pull that. Wow. <laughs> Yoink. <laughs> Some Looney Tunes stuff. Same. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, there it goes. Ah, now, now we're free. This whole thing is uh, relatively free. Let's let's go and grab. Let me see what's inside. Hmm, there's coolant in there. That's right. Well, let's just. Uh, how much time do we have? Let's just uh, see if we can just grab the whole thing. One won't do it. Let's try two. There we go. Oh, cool. Not attached. Excellent. We could take that guy right out. Don't hit anything. Throw that in there. We'll do the same thing that we did the other one to this guy here. One, two. I moved some big heavy stuff using this strategy here. No tethers remaining. Oh, 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 oh. This is taking a whole lot more than I thought it would. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in there that I don't want necessarily to let go. Um, let me see. You, you. I just released the tethers, by the way. I'm hoping it slows it down just enough. And get some parts out. Salvage Oops. Secured. I just uh, blasted Price that thing in there. Oh. Dang. oh, dang it. I was trying to keep my distance. Just to, just wreck. Oh, God, it's right next to me. But this is definitely a waste if this whole thing goes in. It's gonna go in. Okay, you know what? That's fine. You know what? That's fine. Now, where did that thing go? So I don't get shocked when I come out. Thumbs up. Hey, you know we we yeah, we destroyed glass. The uh, salvage objective uh, objective failed because we we uh, threw too much electrical away. It looks like, and it knows that we're not gonna meet that quota. So I guess we're not gonna get that extra 75 LT. But we've definitely accumulated enough for. Let's go and grab this. To meet, uh, well, to not have to come back. Let me see. Is there anything else in here I could grab that's uh, mechanical? Was what, what, electrical, mechanical, mechanical. Yeah, everything else is mechanical. So yeah, the game knows that you're not going to meet meet one quota, so it just kind of just ejects. It's like, nah, get Your out of here. Your oxygen reserves are low. Note that excess carbon dioxide can cause damage here. to Link's equipment. No tethers available. No, 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 no. I want to get in here. I want to get in here. So you can release it by hitting these things. Ah. Oh, so the um, the nacelle on the side, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I could I could have sliced that thing open and uh, from the inside and released it and then dropped it down to the barge, uh, which I believe is where it needed to go. And that would have given me some more money to deal with, but we didn't get it. But the good news is is that we still came out in the green ultimately. So. We're pretty much good to go, and I think I, we actually probably also have met almost all of our quotas except for the, uh, uh, let's see, our certification. Oh, we one more work order objective. That would have been it if I would have hit that. And, of course, we need to get more credits. So the credits are going to be the thing we have to grind out, basically. Uh, and to do that, we're not going to use that. We're not going to use the, uh, the same ship. We're going to actually go to the ship catalog. And this is where you can go through and pick another ship. Uh, and like I said, like it gets hard. Even though it's the same ship, it's hard because it's more it's a more complex system in order to disengage things. Uh, when you first start out, your first hour or two of going through and playing is not going to be the same as what you just saw. Uh, it's going to be much easier. Uh, so... And you'll, you'll, you'll make mistakes, and that's totally fine. You'll make mistakes, you're going to take damage, you're going to end up going over, you're going to owe more than you uh, initially started with, uh, stuff like that. But you'll end up making it up, and you know, you'll be fine. Um, I gotta say, I, I, this this game definitely delivers on on the... Uh, almost kind of like a, like a driving, uh, like a truck simulator type thing, where it's like... You know, this feel it does. It feels like work, but it's a very soothing, calming, relaxing kind of experience. I was playing. I've 
most of my time spent playing this has been very late at night where I get in and just play a nice relaxing game before going to bed. Uh, and I feel like that's where this game shines. Maybe not as exciting for like a stream or anything like that. Maybe not even necessarily exciting for an episode of Any for Breakfast. Uh, but in terms of um, the therapeutic benefits that you get from it, uh, I feel like it's it's it does a good job. There's some there's definitely some rough edges. Like no, you cannot uh, change your um, your key binds. Uh, the music is very repetitive. Uh, but all that stuff, I mean, the, the music being repetitive, you could just, you know, mute the music and play something else. And uh, and you want to deal with that. But but everything else, I mean, you see coming soon, coming soon. So there's definitely stuff that's uh, that's coming soon, <laughs> as you could see. Uh, and hopefully some of that stuff is some of the things that I mentioned in today's episode. So, so that's it. Hard space ship breaker. <laughs> I think Woofy said it the best, but it was like, it's a combination of just like random words, like a, it's like a random game, space game uh, uh, name generator, right? <laughs> Hard Space Ship Breaker. Great. It's like the rogue legacy of uh, roguelites. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely worth a look if this some, looks like something that you might be into. Uh, again, very relaxing, very chill game, and well worth at least taking a look at. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. The game is called Hard Space Ship Breaker. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and see ya.